<coughs> oh, <clears throat> sorry. I am dying right here in front of your ears. I've been sick for the last two weeks. It's that time of year, right? Kids going to summer camp and like coming home and giving you illnesses. It's, that's what my life is. Anyways, I don't know about you guys. Am I right? Cue laugh track. <laughs> so I just held a poll to see what you wanted me to cover in my next video. And unanimously, well not unanimously, but like far and above everything else, Bojack Horseman came out on top. So anyway, today we're talking about fun stuff like mental health and depression because today we're talking about Cha Cha Real Smooth, an indie flick by up and coming writer, director, producer, editor, cinematographer, actor Cooper Rafe. Many of you have probably never heard of him and neither did I until seeing this movie. So I did a quick internet search to see what he's all about and boy, this guy is a fucking legend. Four years ago, he was a college kid in LA who made a short film for a school titled Madeline and Cooper. He uploaded the film to YouTube, tweeted it to Room 104 creator Jay Duplass, who basically told him he had a sick movie on his hands, so he turned it into a feature length film called Shit House with a $15,000 budget and submitted it to South by Southwest, where it won Best Narrative Feature and was distributed by IFC Film. He then sold his second script for Cha Cha Real Smooth to Apple, which he'd been working on since freshman year of college, and that was produced on a budget of 15 million. He literally went from creating a $15,000 picture to a $15 million picture, a 1000% jump. Let me reiterate, a college kid tweeted a YouTube video and immediately went on to direct an eight figure film backed by one of the world's largest streaming platforms. Cooper, fuck you for making the rest of us look awful. Save some shine for the rest of us, bro. Also, also, I got a script for a mini series that I want to send you in case you're watching. No pressure, but spread the love. You suck, but I love you. I'm just jealous. Help me produce my show. It's fantastic. So Cha Cha Real Smooth is a terrific movie that sprang out of nowhere and really wowed the shit out of me. It covers a lot of material in its 107 minute running time, dealing with, dare I say, adulting trauma and arrested development, but in a truly honest and authentic way that I haven't seen from like any film ever, save for maybe Lady Bird. It's a coming of age narrative about many things, including like I said, hashtag adulting, but the element of the film that I responded to the most was the part about trying to figure out your shit, but being stalled by past traumas and being unable to grow out of your old coping patterns. The film begins by introducing our main character, Andrew, as a youngster. He starts out the film at a school dance, I believe, or a bar mitzvah, I'm not quite sure on that point, but the point here is that this really hot party, party starter lady slash DJ woman uh, makes him feel really good about himself and very excited and like brings out his inner happiness, I guess, at this dance. And he decides to ask her out on a date. And of course, she says no, because that would be illegal, looking at you, licorice pizza, which obviously leaves Andrew distraught and with... You know, I hesitate to use the word trauma because like I believe that is an overused word, but like, you know, when you're 12 and you feel love for the first time and are instantly rejected and made to feel like that emotion is perverted, it may leave you very scarred and messed up in the ways of love for the rest of your life. He's just a dumb kid who has a lot of love to give, but doesn't comprehend or appreciate his own emotions, which in the end turn out to be his superpower. And I believe that is the core tension throughout the rest of the film, right? Andrew learning about love from everyone in his life. He has so much love to give, but others with their own traumas reject it because sometimes it's easier for people to just be sad. In a world full of grief and suffering, Andrew is an unyielding force of happiness and positivity, and he wants to give that love and energy to people he believes need it most. And I think that's a good place to jump over to discussing his mother's part in all of this as played incredibly well by Leslie Mann and her connection with her new husband. I don't think it's a coincidence that his stepfather Greg works in the pharmaceutical sector and his mother has severe depression and bipolar disorder. It may surprise people outside the United States, but we have medications for everything, and bipolar illness is more commonly diagnosed in women who are far more likely to be prescribed drugs for therapy. That's not to suggest that medications are harmful for individuals with bipolar disorder. Quite the contrary, actually. I believe it's critical for people who require them to discover their medications and their dosages that work best for them. In the instance of Andrew's mother, it took a long time for her to discover that the perfect dose for her is Greg. 
as cold and uninterested as he appears, he has his moments, and when it counts, he helps keep Andrew's mother safe. Out of an abundance of love, Andrew is very protective of his mother and distrusting of Greg and the cold, uninteresting way that he balances his mother out. But in the end, he realizes that that's just what his mother needs and what she deserves. Someone or something that helps her live and love and function in a world that is just not ready for her. And you can see this also reflected in his relationship with Domino, played by Dakota Johnson, who is clinically depressed. Throughout the film, I got the impression that Joseph was secretly an abusive partner, and I think Andrew also kind of assumes the same thing, given how Domino feels about her life and how she talks about it. And at one point, I actually wagered a guess that Joseph secretly had a second family in Chicago. But it turns out he's simply a good guy struggling to support someone that he loves and who needs him. In the end, you see that he shows up in a really true and honest portrayal of a partner in a relationship with someone who is clinically depressed. He has his flaws, he falters, but he's genuinely a humble and good guy. And that threw me for a complete loop. Now, I want to talk about Andrew as a character. At the beginning of the film, we see him approach an older woman, get rejected, then flash forward to him having fun and getting drunk at this party with his girlfriend, um, only to find out that she's trying to break up with him before a semester abroad. But he sort of doesn't get it and thinks that everything is fine. I actually went through exactly this situation in college. My ex and I met over Christmas break, had a two week fling, and she left to study abroad for three months without us knowing what we were. And I went through all the same emotions and feelings that he does, right? Like the things like feeling jealous and like checking out their social media and like reading the comments and realizing that there's someone else involved in the picture, but not being allowed to be jealous because you didn't, you didn't really like lock that down before you left. Anyway, personal anecdote aside, he essentially closes the film in the same position that he was in when we met. He remains his naively optimistic self, is rejected by an older woman, and concludes his journey in the same place he started, having fun at a party just vibing out. Andrew is a static character, which as I noted in my Ferris Bueller video, go check that out, isn't always a negative thing. I could see this movie going a route where his optimistic yet hopeless romantic self gets a reality check and becomes wiser in the ways of love. But that would have resulted in a shittier ending, right? I like Andrew as a character because of his optimism. Despite the fact that many things tried to take that optimism away from him, he managed to keep it in the end. He tried and failed to fix the people around him with love and happiness. His mother didn't need him to make her happy. She had her own problems and had to be unhappy at times, and that's just the way that she is. Domino seems to be in a similar boat. He attempted to heal her, but he wasn't what she needed. We all have like a ton of soulmates. I think for you, maybe it's like a special case where you only have a few <laughs> who like could be and really are your soulmates. There's a lid for every pot, someone for everyone. And for someone like Domino, there are very few people who can provide her with the type of love that she needs. In contrast, Andrew is such an accepting and kind person that he can be with anyone and find happiness. And I believe the world needs more of that. We need more Andrews. So what's the point of it all? Why is cha-cha real smooth so important? Well, let me tell you. It matters because growing up means accepting a fundamental human truth. Nobody knows what they're doing, and that's okay. Damage may take many forms. Sometimes it's a pit of despair, and other times it's hopeless optimism. Some people find their calling, while others must forge their own path. When it comes to issues of the heart, rules are meaningless. Nothing in this world is clean. But if you can discover the one thing that makes you happy, whether it's becoming a parent, being a party starter, finding your Greg, the pharmaceutical guy, or chilling on a corn dog, do it. Andrew spends the film sympathizing with others and helping them do the metaphorical cha-cha slide through life, understanding that he knows nothing about adulthood, all the while becoming one, but without sacrificing his optimism, the superpower that defines him. He starts off as a dumb kid who doesn't know anything, and he ends up still a dumb adult who doesn't know anything. Growing up as a delicately nuanced song and dance with unpredictable twists and turns, and navigating around changes in feeling and pace and reacting to the song of life, it can get real funky. Sorry, we can get real funky. But at the end of the day, filling your own cup and finding joy for yourself, whatever that may be, is the key to finding your groove and bringing out the beauty in others. Life's weird. Nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody knows where it's going to go, where their life is going to lead. So go out there and love unconditionally. Give all of yourself to everything that you do. Inspire others and bring positivity out. And maybe you'll figure it out along the way. Or maybe you won't. Who fucking knows? Anyway, that's why Cha Cha Real Smooth is important to me. That's why it matters to me. But I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you agree? 
like, do you disagree? Am I a complete dumbass? Uh, is it really hard to listen to me talk when I have a throat full of crap? Let me know in the comments. And also, I'm working on another video. It's not BoJack Horseman. Sorry. I really want to give you guys what you want, but I also just like really don't feel like committing to an entire series right now. Um, but I do have a script for Succession in the works, so stay tuned for that. Alright, thanks everybody. Love you guys. Be back soon.